I'm gonna get into this. Um, welcome back to the podcast. I just have a couple things I want to say. Here we go. I hope I don't get like some weird feedback from this shit. Let's see. Hello. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends, my beautiful listeners. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're all having a lovely day so far. Today is Friday, November 3rd. Happy November. Um, October flew by pretty quickly, but man, what a month it was. Um, I came into this episode wanting to, if you guys follow my Instagram, I did a, um, I put up a question box and I asked you guys to give me like questions or like things you wanted to talk about in terms of like, periods and being off birth control and like my life and my journey since I got off of my hormonal birth control almost two years ago now um but we're gonna get into that eventually because I still want to do that episode for you guys because women need to like be knowledgeable about that information but I wanted to talk about other stuff that's been just weighing really really heavily on me the past couple days and it's what's going on in uh pop Palestine right now um and the quote-unquote war that's happening right now in Palestine versus Israel but it's really not a war because a war implies that both sides are fighting evenly against each other um but that's very clearly not the case like anyone with a functioning brain and eyes and access to the internet can see that that's not the case um And it's just been really weighing heavily on my heart that I, as a content creator and someone like an online coach that makes my income by posting content and by posting, you know, brands that I work with um, and then by posting just myself marketing, like to pick up more online coaching clients. It's hard. I'm finding it really hard recently to continue posting that just because of my own like internal battles with like fighting the algorithm and looking for certain numbers and things to hit instead of just providing value but aside from like just my internal stuff going on with my content on top of all that we are witnessing a literal genocide going through our phones and um it's hard to post like here's my outfit that that i wore to the gym today um when i can scroll through twitter or through tiktok and see footage of what's going on in Palestine right after I post my silly little outfit or my silly little breakfast and of course I can get into the mentality of like you know just keep focusing on myself keep just doing what I have to do but it just feels it's like unfair I think um it's unfair that I have the privilege to continue living my life like this and the privilege to choose to turn a blind eye which I'm not saying I have done but if you're a person that chooses to oh I just don't want to see this I just you know it's hurting me I don't want to see it I just I'm blocking accounts and blocking words whatever it is on the internet just to make you feel a little bit better like you have to acknowledge that that comes from an enormous place of privilege to be able to block accounts and stuff like that because people are literally living this and to just be able to block an account because you don't want to see it is extremely privileged but besides that aside the point um yeah I don't know I talked about this a little bit on my TikTok yesterday just about how life feels very dystopian right now and again like as someone that has to post on the internet to get paid I feel like it makes it worse but um everyone that has to work to live I mean everyone in this country especially that isn't offered like t- a, like chance to like leave work and leave and like time to grieve and time to just not work to have to literally survive is a victim of this as well whether you think about it or not like the fact that we're just supposed to all continue living our lives like this like nothing is going on is actually absurd and it speaks a lot to just the hustle grinding productivity culture that we have in this country that is extremely messed up and extremely not like human centered and human forward it's capitalist centered and money forward and focused and it's just not fair um 
And I find that, you know, me being again someone that makes money from posting on the internet, it just, I'm, I'm there with everyone else that has to continue working through this and living their lives like nothing's going on. But for me, with posting on the internet, it's like choosing to continue posting my life as if nothing is going on. Whereas like everyone else like doesn't have to be posting on the internet, you know what I mean? But I'm not saying I have it worse than anyone else, but I'm just saying like as a creator, like use, I've been using my platform for good. I'm speaking out about this. Obviously I'm here on podcast and I am um, also recording a little YouTube video and I'm gonna upload it. Hopefully my camera doesn't die or anything, but I'm gonna upload this as a YouTube video as well so we can see it on there because I've really been wanting to talk about this. And it just sucks to have to continue posting my content to continue getting paid um, when I have to also be cognizant of the fact that this is going on. And I hate, I think I just don't like the idea of pretending like my life is okay. My life is okay, let me say that. My life is okay. My personal life is good. Um, Mental health just yesterday was like a little weird. I just went into like a little spiral, but I'm also in my luteal phase, which we'll get to talking about with the whole period situation. But, um, and we already know that my down badness tends to happen during my luteal phase. So I assume when I wake up on my period, like I'll probably be good, but this will not be over the day that I wake up on my period. So it will still take into effect a bit, but um, I don't know, I'm just fucking rambling at this point. <laughs> really, I feel like I'm not really, putting coherent sentences together. But um, man, I don't know, just, I'm gonna post links. I found a thread on Twitter with a lot of links to help um, this situation, to help the people in Palestine, to uh, protest. If there's protests going on in your city, be able to find them and go out and do that because um, these people just need our help and it's just not fair to be able to, the, like, it's just not fair to everyone else. <sighs> I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It's just dystopian and weird. And the fact that we are seeing this occur through our phones and again, just scrolling and seeing like normalcy, but knowing in the back of our head that this is going on. And then the fact that we, you know, non-content creators, literally everyone else still has to go to work and go sit in an office and go sit from nine to five and go do your silly little tasks at work and then go home and watch the news and try to go to sleep. Like this isn't going on and it's not fair to them. And of course you can sit here and think like, well, what am I supposed to do? How can I help? Um, that's what I'm gonna post these resources for. And I, I think that after talking to some of my friends, after talking to my parents, after fa literally FaceTiming my parents a couple nights ago and sobbing to them about this situation um, and how I feel so helpless and just so upset about the whole thing really, um, that I think is a big thing that you can continue doing is um, having these conversations with yourself, with your family members, with people that just need to be educated with um, the internet, if that's something that you wanna do, because there are voices that um, are being silenced over there in Palestine, and there is real true footage of what's happening on the ground coming out, and we can help showcase what's going on by spreading these messages. And again, I think the biggest thing is having these conversations and educating ourselves and educating our loved ones and not getting them to like pick a side. I mean, yes, pick a side, because if you are a human being, again, with a functioning brain and functioning eyes, you can see very clearly what's going on. Um, and this is not an even war. This is not a fair war. I feel like, you know, I was listening to a podcast this morning, just like a news podcast, and they were reviewing everything that's going on. And they said something about, um, oh, following the laws of war and the fact that there are laws of war. I'm sure... <laughs> There's a law in there that says that war has to be an e and like an even fight, like an even back and forth, and that just is not what's going on. So, um, again, I'm gonna post resources that you guys can go through. There's like websites that you can fill out to um, what's the word? Pressure our president to call for a ceasefire because there's a lot of that going on, and apparently he claims that he wants to call for a pause in the war, quote unquote, 
but not necessarily a ceasefire. So we need a pressure for that to happen because that is the best thing that we can get right now is a full ceasefire, just stopping everything that's going on. And um, yeah, just again, it's it's hard, you know, because I want to say keep taking care of yourselves and putting yourself first. And yes, that's valid. And yes, that's true. But I think like in that same sentence, just don't don't like turn a blind eye and don't be ignorant to what's going on and continue having these conversations because I don't know. Yeah, the world's messed up. And we can get into everything that I want to get into about like God and praying and keep you know, just keep praying, keep those in mind, this, this and that and we don't we don't need to get into all that. But y'all already know where I stand with religion. And if if that makes you feel better, go ahead and, like I said, do what makes you feel better. But taking physical action will provide the most change. So let's do that. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's pretty much all I had to say about that. Um, like I said, again and again, I will post resources. I just need to keep reminding myself so I actually post them. I have like the link pulled up on my Twitter right now. But um, yeah, that's that about that. So I just had to get that off my chest. I literally was editing a YouTube video yesterday of just like a couple weeks worth of recording, like vlogging that I did. Maybe probably like fucking three weeks ago, almost a month ago at this point of just stuff I've accumulated. But I scrapped all of it because I... <laughs> don't like to post old content and so much has changed since then like i was talking about pluto and his new food diet and everything that i'm doing for him but that has changed in the past couple weeks as well so um i'm gonna upload this podcast as a youtube video and then probably just do like a sit down or something or just start a new vlog this week or this weekend um and yeah i just had to talk about this because again I, I posted a couple things on Instagram and I talked about it on uh, TikTok yesterday but I needed to continue posting about it and talking about it today because it, it hasn't left my mind so yeah okay with that I think we can get into the premise of the podcast which is um birth control or not being on birth control stopping taking birth control um and yeah so I, it's just gonna go in i'm just gonna go in and talk about um what am i saying i'm distracted i'm on my phone okay there we go i had to pull up the the question box okay so basically i li i was listening to uh sam and taylor's podcast the one thing about us podcast and they were talking they've done two episodes back to back about like get birth control getting off birth control their experience since then and everything so i was like you know what i have similar experiences let me do an episode on that too because i know the girlies need to get educated even like the men if there are men listening to this which hopefully there normally are a couple of men listening to this you can learn sorry after god oh my god mm. i also be just getting out of breath if you hear me like exasperating and like or like really doing like an exasperated sigh i just get like I get out of breath. I'd be talking too fast. But um, yeah, men listening to this can also learn as well because if their girlfriend is has gotten off birth control recently or wants to get off birth control and just needs to learn more about her cycle and everything, you can learn from this as well. So uh, for some backstory, I was on hormonal birth control, like the pill that I would take every fucking day since... Excuse um... <laughs> Since January of 2018, it was my freshman year. It was like going into spring semester of my freshman year of college. I had a boyfriend all through high school. And I think when I went home for the holidays and I went back up to school or like, you know, went home for the holidays, I was like, I have a boyfriend and I we've been having sex and I want to get on birth control. I don't want to get pregnant. So they put me on birth control and I say all that to say that I didn't have like any anything else that would have warranted me getting on birth control. So like sometimes women get on birth control for like heavy periods, for like really bad cramps, for an irregular period, for uh, acne, whatever it might be. My thing was just I don't want to get pregnant. I want to be on birth control, period. So 
Um, funny enough, we broke up going into that semester, but I was in college, so it was still useful. And um, it wasn't until, yeah, like April, April of last year, April of 2022. Yeah, this is gonna be two years. Yeah, April-ish, maybe March, April of 2022 that I just fully cold turkey stopped taking it. I just woke up one day and I said, you know what, I'm gonna stop. And I'd been thinking about it for a while and I just fucking stopped. Um, the thing that was top of mind when I made that decision was the fact that I wasn't actively pursuing anyone. I wasn't, I wasn't like actively having sex. So I was like, what the fuck am I taking this for if I have no one like in my sight and if I'm not, you know what I mean? Like my one reason for taking it wasn't there anymore. So um, I stopped and I haven't looked back since. And I don't remember um, there being anything initially that like happened. Like I said, like I didn't have any kind of like pre-existing issues that would have warranted me taking it. So it was a pretty smooth transition off, I think. And I'm pretty sure before I started taking it that I did have a pretty consistent period so it wasn't that difficult for me to get off of it personally, but I know that that can be different for, and again, different women with different experiences. So with that, I'm gonna go into my questions now. Okay. Do you experience irregular period cycles? No, I do not. So um, again, before I started taking it, I'm pretty sure I was pretty consistent, which was great. And then um, getting off, I don't remember at what part or like in what, you know, what's the word? Like how far into the pack I was when I stopped taking it because you know that, or this is something that I'm here to teach you, that your period while you're taking hormonal birth control like the pill isn't a real period. So those, that like week and a half or like 10 placebo pills that you take that like stimulate your period, like that's not a real period because the whole point of hormonal birth control is that you don't ovulate and what causes your real natural period is that you ovulate for like a full, you know, you ovulate, the egg comes out, it kind of sits there. And then when nothing happens, nothing fertilizes it, it goes away, the lining to your uterus sheds, and then that is you bleeding, that's your period. So when you're on hormonal birth control, the hormones that are pumping through your system just fully stop you from ovulating. No ovulation is taking place. You have all these additional hormones just flowing through your system and that's what's going on. So because you don't ovulate, you don't get a natural period. So what that like placebo period is, I don't know. I'm not aware of what it actually is. It's just a way to make you bleed to kind of help reassure you that you're not pregnant because I'm pretty sure if you got pregnant while you're on birth control, you wouldn't be having that like fake period, you know? <sighs> so, sorry, I'd be talking too much. No matter breath. But, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm like glancing over the questions. Okay, I lost my train of thought too. Um, okay, so getting back into it. Yeah, okay, so I didn't, I don't remember like where I was in the pack when I stopped taking it, but I'm pretty sure I got a regular period, you know, maybe a couple weeks after I first stopped. And then since then, it's been pretty regular. And I was always good about tracking my period, at least just like, when it started and how many days lasted and when it ended. Like I would just go on my calendar on my phone and put like a little red heart on like the days that it, the days that I'm like actively bleeding. So I was always good about tracking my period. And then I was learning more and more, you know, about the fact that there are different cycles of your period and that um, about every week ish or like 10 days is like the phase of your cycle or like the different phases of your cycle. And I knew that about two weeks after your period starts or like two weeks before your next period starts is about when you ovulate. So I had all that knowledge in mind. So if I was going to be having sex, I would keep that in mind. Um, but that played more into account again, cause I really, I wasn't fucking you guys. Like I, I really, I wasn't fucking, <laughs> like, um, wasn't until about January of this year um, that that kind of changed shout out my boyfriend but um yeah i again i had that knowledge of again when i'm kind of ovulating and just to be careful around that time you know whatever and it was funny because when joel moved here i even kind of considered like maybe i should get an iud because again 
and we be fucking. <laughs> yeah. So I almost considered getting an IUD, but I was like, no, I can do this. I can stay confident, stay informed and no, I can only get pregnant during this ovulation phase. And then I started hearing about this app, natural cycles where natural cycles, I guess they, well, I know now I fucking use it every day. You take your temperature and based on this part of the month or like part of your cycle that you're in, your temperature will fluctuate, right? So like after you ovulate, um, your temperature spikes up. So like in your luteal phase, like where I'm in right now, your temperature goes up like a degree and a half, something like that. Or like, it's like a range between like a couple, like 0.8 to like a degree and a half, something like that. So, um, natural cycles will help you track your cycle by checking your temperature every morning. And if that sounds like a lot to you, there's like the aura ring that you can get as well. And the aura ring will do the, all the work for you. But I want to get that eventually just, I don't have the budget for that right now, but, um, yeah. So I eventually started going into natural cycles and natural cycles only really works if you have a regular period. So I guess to finish fucking answering this question that I love to, I went into a tangent about, I do not experience irregular period cycles. I am very, very regular. And if you are irregular upon getting off, you should try to see a holistic doctor to help you fix that because there's probably something else internally wrong. Go get your hormones checked to go get blood work done because again, uh, getting put on birth control is like slapping a bandaid on the bruise or like on the issue. It's not fixing like the internalness of why your period is irregular. So you need to go get help officially and professionally. <sighs> um, did going off birth control make your flow heavier slash more cramps because my birth control controls that so much? So no, actually, um, I it's like maybe like the first day or two that are like really heavy, but they're not anything horrible. And then actually the worst cramps that I get are like the day before I first start bleeding and then like the day of that I start bleeding. After that, like I'm pretty much good. Like I'm just worrying, I'm just worrying about bleeding itself, but I'm not in any pain really. So I have a pretty easy period. Um, I want to say that a part of what helped with that is the fact that I wear a diva cup. I don't wear tampons. I haven't worn tampons in literally years. I did start doing diva cup. Excuse me. Oh my God. <laughs> I did start the diva cup while I was still on birth control because I had switched it at some point. Um, and doing that switch, my period got significantly worse. So being on a different type of birth control actually made my period a lot worse. So I switched the diva cup because my period was so much heavier. Um, and then when I got off, like it probably lightened up a little bit and it, sh it just shortened. Like my period right now is like four active days that I have to worry about it. Everything else is like, you know, the barbecue sauce. <laughs> like if you know, you know. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna try to speed through these, let's see. Um, but again, okay, wait. Again, let me fucking focus here. <laughs> if heavy flow, and cramps are a big issue for you. Again, that's kind of an underlying issue that you maybe should look further into because again, the birth control kind of just masks that for you. Um, and again, I'm no professional. I just know that birth control is just kind of a band-aid, and it's not gonna internally, it's not gonna like heal any of these issues is the word I should use. It's just going to mask them and if you ever want to have kids one day, you have to figure that out. You know what I mean? Like you want to figure that out like in advance so that when that part of your life comes, you're not worrying about it like in the moment, you know? Okay. What have you learned about yourself since being off birth control? Um, this is part of the reason why I wanted to get off of it as well is to just be more like in tune and like aligned with my body. So, um, I would say that I'm like less, I know I had some moments of like sadness. I feel like my emotions, like I, I can definitely acknowledge that I get, I can get into like spirals a lot, not easier now, but I have this history now. It's happened three or three or so times already that um, during my luteal phase, like I do kind of, I have the tendency of like spiraling, like something's wrong. I feel a certain way about myself. 
and then it just spirals into just all this other nonsense and that happens during my luteal phase because my emotions and my hormones are heightened and that just tends to happen there um but i don't know if i was this emotional while i was on it too i feel like Again, this birth control is just really like a mask and you're not like as in tune with yourself as like you should want to be, you know? So I I guess I've learned, you know, I, I just, not that I've learned something new about myself, but just I like knowing what my body's supposed to be feeling like. Like I can tell when I'm ovulating. I can tell when my period's coming. I can tell like when my period's ending. Like it's just nice to be really in tune with myself because again, like I guess my hormones are good. I've never gotten any blood work officially done, but I guess I'm good because everything is pretty regular. So that's a nice feeling to have, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think I learned anything like new about myself, so to say. How have your intimate relationships changed since being off birth control? I want to say, and then another one, did you, did birth control decrease your sex drive? I don't think it did. I don't think it did. Honestly, again, I feel like I had like kind of a seamless transition, like being on it and like being off of it. But I know a lot of women experience that like lack of uh, sex drive. And I know that sometimes it can also be like paired with something else like was I eating enough in college like was I exercising too much too little whatever it might be like there are always like different factors that could um play into that as well but I think I was good and like I have you know like it's it's there nowadays you know like it's it's there <laughs> um so no I don't think it necessarily decreased it and I like I said I think I'm pretty good right now also <laughs> Um, okay, someone said, not a question, but coming up birth control has been the best thing in terms of my fat loss and strength training. So that's good. Again, I didn't get off of it for that reason, but a lot of people claim that like, oh my God, I gained so much weight on birth control, whatever. And birth control itself won't make you gain weight, but it can like probably increase your appetite, which is going to make you eat more, which is going to make you gain weight if you can't, you know, control it. So that's the thing with that. And of course, just like messing with your hormones and everything, and that could just mess up that cycle as well. But again, I'm not a professional. Don't take my word for granted. Just take this all with a grain of salt. I also didn't consult a doctor before I did this. But mm, <laughs> I'm making a face because like <clears throat> doctors like want what's best for you. Here I go with my fucking like conspiracy bullshit. Doctors want what's best for you, technically, sure, but they also not get paid by Big Pharma, but, like, they benefit from, like, us taking stuff that Big Pharma creates like this. So if you tell your doctor, like, oh, my God, my periods are so heavy, like, oh, my God, I have these acne issues, which is one of the, what one of these questions is about, like, oh, here, take this birth control. It should help. Oh, that one doesn't work. Let's switch you to another one. Oh, that one doesn't work. Let's try the arm implant. You know, like they don't at least like a general like gynecologist like won't really help get you to like the internal like in like the lying issue as to why you're feeling all of this so again this is why you kind of have to seek out like a holistic doctor or something better than just a general fucking physician of a gynecologist because a lot of times they won't want to get to like the bottom of your issues um so with that someone asked really want to get off birth control but i have acne issues and accutane is not something i want to go back to again seek out a doctor that's not your primary gynecologist if they keep giving you issues about like other options go to a dermatologist and tell them like you're on birth control you want to get off how can i go about taking care of my skin while i'm off of it you'd be surprised what like a good skincare routine does for you and i know i say that as someone with that struggles with acne as well but i also struggled with acne while i was on it so i again that's something that i don't think made much of a switch for me being on it or being off of it because now I think I get like hormonal acne, you know, like near my chin, like the bottom of my cheeks. And that's just based on my normal period at this point. But I did also break out pretty badly, like while I was still taking the pill as well. Okay. Why did you get off? I already said that. Started natural cycles. Any tips? Stay consistent with it. 
Uh, the whole thing with natural cycles is that you have to stay consistent with it. You have to be waking up at around the same time every day. I think that's like maybe like a two hour window that you can measure your temperature, but making sure that you're measuring your temperature before you roll out of bed and put your feet on the ground. My thing with checking my temperature is that my alarm goes off in the morning and then like I turn off the alarm and I pop the, te the thermometer in my mouth. And if you can't remember to do that, consider getting an aura ring or consider just really like, again, learning your body and then just tracking it on like a piece of paper or not a piece of paper, but you know what I mean? Like on your phone, again, with the rough idea that like your period starts, it finishes and then two weeks after it starts is around when you should be ovulating and make that like a window of like five days, five or seven days when like you should be careful having sex. And then after that, you're good until your period starts again. That's pretty much what natural cycles tells you. Um, okay. As a power lifter, how do you program with your period? So I've talked about this before. Um, I'm stretching, hold on. Oh my God. Hmm, sorry. Um, okay, as a power lifter, how do you program with your period? So I've talked about this before. I don't schedule my programming around my period because my period doesn't give a fuck when my next meet is. So like going into my last meet in June, there was a chance that I was gonna start my period like the day of or like a couple days before and I would be on it. It ended up coming like that Monday. Like I literally competed Saturday, went to Puerto Rico on Sunday and then that Monday I got my period. So it held off, which was great. But um, yeah, I don't schedule my programming around my period because again, it doesn't matter if I do that in my off season because, or even in my prep, because if my period comes on my meet day, then I'm fucked, you know? And typically for me, I'm stronger on my period. Like literally the day that I start my period, I'm like, oh, all is better. Like everything's great in the world. I'm good, I'm clear headed, I'm level headed. We are so good. Um, normally this luteal phase is like the harder week for me, which kind of explains, now that I'm saying this out loud, kind of explains why my training has felt a little shitty this week. <laughs> but um, yeah, you just gotta fucking power through, honestly. Power lifting, power through. And as much as it sucks to say that, like if you are a girly that believes in cycle syncing and you know lower intensity while you're on your period or while you're on your luteal phase, sorry, while you're in your luteal phase, um, good for you, do that. But if you are a competitor, in powerlifting or in bodybuilding, you can't really like, kinda gotta suck it up, honestly. Um, because yeah, like your period doesn't care. I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, you're probably gonna end up losing your period. But with powerlifting, if you bleed on meat day, you can't control that, you know? So um, work with your coach as best you can. Maybe you can try to schedule it to, you know, plan your block out around your period, but it doesn't make much of a difference, honestly, and it shouldn't, you know, you just have to go into it mentally, like, I'm good, if something hurts, take Advil, drink a lot of water, make sure you're eating a lot before you go train, um, and if I'm, like, ever really in pain, again, I just pop Advil, drink a lot of water, and go, like, that's kind of the name of the sport. <laughs> um... Was it scary getting off? I want to, but too scared of potential pregnancy. So I think that, um, again, I wasn't having sex when I first got off. So I didn't have to worry about like when I would ovulate, when my period would come, when it first happened. But if you're like with a partner, say like I say, I did have a boyfriend when I wanted to get off. And then when I just did decide to go off, I would play it safe and probably use a condom or abstain from having sex until I got that next period and then roughly start tracking it from there and then take the time to just be really cautious for like a couple months until you can see your period getting regular. Again, your period should last between, or your whole cycle should be 28 to like 32 days, maybe like pushing mid thirties. Um, and based on that like timeline, you can kind of figure out like when you're ovulating. So if you're scared of potential pregnancy and you have a boyfriend, use a condom and start tracking, you know, when you got off the pill or like when you stop taking it, when your next cycle is, and then try to like roughly estimate and just really start getting in tune with like how you're feeling and like how you're doing and just try to figure it out from there. But once your period regulates after you get off, again, it's just as easy as tracking the first day of your period, 
about two weeks after that is when you ovulate and you should feel it when you ovulate not like when you actively ovulate but like that period of time like you might feel a little prettier your emotions like your good happy emotions are heightened like um you might get some more discharge it happens to me sometimes you can get um like ovulation cramps a little bit um and you kind of just know honestly like i keep saying like you really just get in tune with yourself and you just kind of know when everything's going on Okay, did you wait to have sex after stopping birth control and starting natural cycles? I didn't wait, but um, again, I was just careful. Like if I had sex with anyone after I got off, like it was just a matter of being really careful. Um, and again, I started natural cycles in January, but between that time, if I did have sex, it was just condom or abstaining, period. <laughs> um. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Hmm. Hopped on it, literally maybe break out so bad, got off it, still deal with it. Been off for two years and still bothering me. Do not recommend taking. Maybe that happened to me, honestly, because I don't remember my acne being bad before I got on it. I maybe remember having more acne while I was on it and then now that I'm off of it. So maybe birth control did fuck up my acne situation, but Okay, someone else said, I just got off two months ago, never felt so mentally clear and my libido spiked. There you go. Some women have that where like your libido, your sex drive just plummets while you're on it and then you get off and it's boom. You're good to go again. <laughs> the diva fucked me up. As soon as I hopped on it, maybe I got so bad. Oh, this is part one to the last question or to the last thing about the acne. It fucked me up. Used to not have any breakouts, but as soon as I hopped on it, then we made me break out so bad. Got off, but still deal with it. Been off for almost two years. It's still bothering me. Yep. There you go. So again, I think, and this is it. This is the end of my questions pretty much, but everything else is kind of repeated of what I already said. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the summation of that. Um, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to get off of it, to stay on it, to start taking it, whatever. What I am going to tell you is, again, my experience with it. Um, and you can listen to the experiences of, like, other women with their situations. Like, again, listening to um, Sam and Taylor's podcast is what influenced this. They're um, the One Thing About Us podcast. You can look them up on Spotify and Apple as well. But... Um, yeah, just do what's best for you. And if you're in a relationship and you're for some reason scared of having the conversation about getting off with your partner, that's not a good sign. It's your body. You should have body autonomy. You shouldn't be able to make decisions for yourself about yourself. And you shouldn't have to worry about your partner's repercussions. And you can sit there and educate them and you can tell them, you know, we just have to be safe, be a little cautious for a while. And then I could get more in tune and start tracking, use natural cycles, whatever it might be, they should sponsor me. I try working with them. I'm gonna keep trying because I really, I love them. And it has changed my outlook on like my sex life and just my education in general because people are still under the impression that you can just get pregnant at any time of the year, like any time of the month when it's literally like a period of time of like five days out of the month that you can get pregnant. And we're not taught that in schools. So to have, you know, people like me, other women with just more education on this, like it helps and that's what I'm here for. Like I always wanna be an advocate for women. I always wanna be helping women and teaching them and just telling you that you should be confident in your decision-making, especially when it comes to your own body and your own health and your period and your cycle and you should want to feel what your body naturally goes through. You shouldn't want just chemicals masking everything that's going on inside of you. That makes sense. But um, yeah, I think this is the end for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry that it started off a little slow and sad or not as upbeat as I might normally be, but serious shit is going on in the world and we need to not be selfish and to help in any way that we can. But I also know that um, we all got to keep fucking working, unfortunately, because that's kind of the world that we live in right now. But just keep staying educated, keep standing up for yourself and standing up for others that don't have a voice. And um, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, I'll be uploading on YouTube. I'll put a, I'll, la, 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 la. <sighs> Breathe, bitch. 
English. I will upload this podcast today to YouTube. It's going up right now on uh, the streaming services. So you guys can listen to this episode and other episodes. Make sure you also check out Russ's Better Take podcast that I was on last week. That was a really good episode. We talked for like two and a half hours about literally everything. So make sure you go listen to that to hear more of me and Russ talking shit, of course. But um, yeah, love you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just love you guys. Thank you always for the support and for the love. Um, please share this, leave a rating and a review if you're listening to it, streaming it, and please subscribe to my YouTube because I'm going to keep fucking posting on there because um, I need to and because I want to, and I love you guys. So have a good rest of your day. As always, it's your girl. Goodbye. <laughs>